What's up, everybody? It's a great Wednesday, and another Wednesday of Tribe Wars is coming at us. It is week six already of Tribe Wars. It doesn't feel like it. It is flying by, and I'm super excited tonight because we are finishing the Old Testament tonight. We will be done with the Old Testament. We will have learned all of the books in the Old Testament by the time we're done, all 39. So that's pretty crazy. So I'm super excited for tonight. If you will, when you get here, uh, drop a comment so I know you're watching. Say hey to me. Uh, make sure you click like, all that good stuff, and share so all of our friends out there uh, get a chance to watch with us tonight because we don't want to miss out on the tribe wars, of course. Al, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. Uh, I see a couple people hopping on here with us, so remember, drop a comment so I know you're here and say hey to me, because uh, I don't want to just be the crazy dude talking into the phone with, with nobody talking back to me. Click like, click share. We are going to get started in one second. We're going to give everybody some time to come in here, and I'm pulling up the standings uh, for week six, okay? So the standings for week six... I gotta get those up so that we can go over those and I can update you guys kind of where we're at. Okay, so I'm pulling those up as you guys come in. You're making some some good. Let me swipe this away. There we go. Perfect. And uh, so tonight we are almost got almost got everything pulled up. Three people left. Okay, and we got one more thing to pull up right here. Okay, now, perfect. And lastly, got to get this memory verse pulled up, okay? All right, enough people are checking in. Check the leaderboard. Exactly right, John. We're going to check the leaderboard. Okay, so there we go. Let me move my reposition here. So when I pull my stuff up, okay, now, a couple people are tuning in, so I hope all of my theories, fiery phoenixes, investigators, tomahawks, hope you guys get in here. I'm trying to give everybody a few minutes to get in here because, you know, you got to earn points for your tribe. So I don't want you to miss out. I'm trying to give a fair chance to everybody, okay? And let me say, if you your child was not there the first night we did this, because after that, we ended up being home for COVID. Uh, if your child is not in a tribe, message me. Um, we can put them in a tribe, and they can be a part of a team and earn points for their team because hopefully soon this month we're coming back on campus, and we'll be able to do some tribe wars in person too. We want them to have a tribe. So if your child's not in a tribe, message me. We'll definitely put you in a tribe, okay? So let's go over the standings for week six. Now, if you remember correctly, if you are a theory, you're out there watching the theories, they have led from week one to now, okay? And nothing has changed. They are still on top, okay? Uh, the theories coming in at 108,000 points. They are in first place, 108,000 points. Uh, yesterday, I put out another challenge. If you could say the books of the Bible that we had learned up until this point, we've learned 27 of them, okay? Um, I was going to give your tribe 20,000 points. I got uh, videos from Abigail... Callan and Greenling. If I missed your video, please let me know. But I saw those three. Abigail, Callan, and Greenling. So the theories, the fiery phoenixes, and the investigators all got 20,000 extra points. Gotcha. You guys are the purple. Okay, y'all are tomahawks. Awesome. Cool. So the theories are in first. 108,000 points. All right. In second place, still holding in second place from last week, the investigators with 78,000 points. So they're a little ways behind the theories. The theories have a, have a pretty big gap here. Um, so the investigators, 78,000 points. In third place, the Fiery Phoenix is close behind with 75,500. So with a good showing here tonight, the Fiery Phoenixes could jump into second place. And then in fourth place, the Tomahawks with 41,000 points. The Tomahawks got to get in here. They've, they've got to get back. They've got to get on the ball, get rolling. Um, we got to motivate the, the Tomahawks to get some answers right, to send in some videos because they're a little ways behind. Okay? So there are your standings, the theories, still holding strong in first place. Okay? Nothing has changed there. Now, let's pull up our memory verse here that we have been learning every Wednesday for the past six weeks. Uh, I asked this question last week, and for the first time, somebody was able to give me the scripture reference. I will give your tribe, 
I will give you 20,000 points. It's a pretty significant amount. I'll give you 20,000 points for your tribe if you can comment and tell me where our Wednesday night scripture is found. Where in the Bible is our Wednesday night scripture found? 20,000 points if you can remember it. Okay? I'm looking at it right here. I've almost got it memorized. I definitely know where it's found. The question is, do you know where it's found because it's worth 20,000 points if you do. So I'll give you a few minutes. I'm going to read it while you think, and maybe it'll jog your memory, okay? So our scripture says this, God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. And it is useful for training us to do what is right. Now remember, this whole summer series on Wednesdays, we're learning the books of the Bible. And this verse tells us what God's Word is useful for. Alright, so I'm going to say it one more time. And this time I'm going to give you the scripture reference because I don't see any answers. You guys are missing out on 20,000 points right here. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. And that is found in 2 Timothy 3.16. That's right, 2 Timothy 3.16. So commit that to memory. Lock it away up here because I've asked it every week. So you know every single week you can earn points for your tribe if you're the first one to tell me. 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay? Awesome. So let's get in to our lesson tonight. So I've got to tell you guys... Um, Tonight, ah, now, Shay comes in now with 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay, um, I'm going to have to find out if that was a, um, if that was a before, that the, if, if Abigail said that before I uh, made the announcement of 2 Timothy 3.16, or if we're, we're trying to sneak in here with a, a late comment, okay? So, um, this week, for our lesson, as you can see, not outside, so there will be no sheep around for all of you who were watching last week who thought that sheep were around. Uh, they were not, but there were animals that sounded like sheep. Not tonight, okay? In a very quiet room. So, uh, we don't have to worry, <laughs> worry about any of that stuff, okay? I almost, this week, guys, I almost went and did this video from a pasture with sheep in it uh, so you guys could get a laugh, but I don't know anybody with sheep, so there we go. All right, so tonight we're going to finish out the Old Testament, guys. We have learned 27 books of the Bible so far. We are going to learn 12 books of the Bible tonight. So this is the most books of the Bible we've learned at one time. 12 books at one time. But you guys are smart. You guys have done a great job so far. So I know that you're going to handle this no problem at all. You're going to be able to know these 12 books of the Bible. And when you learn them, you will have learned the whole entire Old Testament. All 39 books of the Old Testament. So you can give yourself a pat on the back where you are at home. That's impressive to know that after tonight, we will have learned all of the Old Testament. That's crazy. So let's talk about it. I will give you 5,000 points. I'm, I'm point happy tonight. I'll give you some points. 5,000 points for your tribe. So, especially if you're behind. I'm trying to help you out here. 5,000, if you can tell me what group we talked about last week. Remember, the first week we had just an intro. The second week we talked about the first five books of the Bible. The third week we talked about the books of history. The fourth week we talked about the books of poetry. And last week, week five, we talked about this group. Can anybody remember who we talked about last week? I will give your tribe 5,000 points. And if you need a little bit of a hint or a reminder maybe as to who we talked about last week, I'll tell you who we're talking about this week. Tonight, we finished talking about the minor prophets. Yep, so tonight we talk about the minor prophets. Does any, that's a, that's a, Pretty decent hint, I think, the Minor Prophets. Okay, sh okay, Prophets. Okay, Abigail's close. Can you give me the word that goes with Prophets? Can you give it to me that goes with Prophets? Tonight we talk about the Minor Prophets. Last week we talked about some other Prophets. Okay? And uh, we learned all about their stories. And their names were Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Those were... What we learned last week. Those five books, they have a name. Yes, I see. This is Abigail. Abigail, can you tell me? Tonight we're learning about the minor prophets. Can you tell me 
who we learned about last week. She is hot on the trail. She is close. Very, very close. I really want to give you these 5,000 points. Ah, there it comes. There it is. So, um, Abigail definitely did get half of it. She got profit. So, I can give you 2,500 points for the Fiery Phoenixes. Uh, my man Noah came through down here. The major profits. That's what I was looking for. Major profits. So, uh, 5,000 points for the Tomahawks. <laughs> Much needed points. They're way behind. And 2,500 points for the Fiery Phoenixes. Let's keep it going. Okay, so tonight, last week we talked about the major profits. Tonight we'll talk about the minor profits. So let me tell you their names. Okay, here are their names. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Whew. Okay, take a deep breath. I know, that's 12 names. A lot of them are hard to pronounce, but we can do this. So let's talk about the minor prophets for a little bit. He said, Pastor Austin, minor prophets, does that mean they were less important than the major prophets? Like the major prophets are like higher up and God liked them better, so he called them major prophets, and, and these guys aren't as important, so he called them minor prophets. Not exactly. You see, the major prophets and the minor prophets are both really, really important. They're equally important. They each told important things to God's people. You see, the minor prophets delivered important messages about God's judgment and God's plan of salvation. If you remember from last week, the major prophets kind of did the same thing. They told and warned God's people about his judgment that was coming to them, but they also gave hope about God's salvation. So, why do we call the other group major prophets and this group minor prophets? Why do we do that? Well, the major prophets are really, really long books. Really long books, okay? The minor prophets are a little bit shorter. They're not nearly as long as we find in the major prophets, okay? So, uh, the book of Isaiah, pretty long book. And so, the major prophets a little bit longer, the minor prophets a little bit shorter, but still very important messages, okay? So, let's talk about these people here, the minor prophets. Now, if you guys haven't figured it out already, God's people, the children of Israel, uh, they had a problem obeying God's word. They had a problem just serving God as the one true God. You see, they would forget all the good things that God did for them, and they would chase after other false gods like Baal and other gods who had crazy names. Okay, Now, they forgot the stories of Noah and Moses and Abraham and all the important guys that we hear about at the beginning of the Bible. God's people had forgotten about them at this time in history. Now, the minor prophets would write, and they were not write, but they would come to the people and they would warn them. They would warn them either by word of mouth or by writing. They would warn them that God, if they did not turn back to God, if the people did not turn back to God, his judgment was going to come on them. He was going to judge them for their sins. But the minor prophets also had a message of hope that God was trying to provide a way of salvation. Does that sound familiar? Kind of sounds like you and me, right? When we mess up and we sin, the Bible tells us we should repent for our sins. That means we should turn to God and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And the awesome thing is he has made a way for us to be saved. And that's by, that's right, Jesus. Jesus made a way for us to be saved from our sins. So we can find a lot of similarities in our story with these people in the Old Testament. So you say, Pastor Austin, what are each of these books about? Well, they all have a common theme. They are trying to warn the people about their sin, and they're telling them to turn back to God, okay? So to focus their eyes on Jesus. We just spent a whole Kids Fest talking about focusing our eyes on Jesus. But let me give you a brief little rundown of each book. So the book of Hosea. Say Hosea with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Hosea. Very good. He delivered a message about God's forgiveness from his own life. You see, God told Hosea to marry a woman who was going to run away from him. That doesn't sound like fun. But even though she hurt him and ran away from him, Hosea forgave his wife and he brought her back home and forgave her. That sound familiar? 
yeah, that's what God's done for us. He has brought us into his family, and he still loves us even when we mess up and hurt him. Now, Joel and Amos, again, both warned about warned God's people that judgment was going to come. That's Joel and Amos. Obadiah went to the people of Edom, and he told them the same message. You get the, get the theme here? Hosea warns about God's judgment. Joel and Amos warn about God's judgment. Obadiah, he warns the people of a city called Edom about God's judgment. The next book we have is Jonah. Now, you guys probably know a thing or two about Jonah. I got some points. I've got hmm, 5,000 5, points. What happened to Jonah? What is the big thing that we know happened to Jonah? He disobeyed God, and what happened to him? I will give you 5,000 points for your tribe if you can tell me what happened to Jonah. We read about that in the book of Jonah. You see, God called him to a city called Nineveh, and he didn't want to go. So he ran away. God wanted him to go tell them if they didn't turn from their sin, bad things were going to happen. Jonah ran and went the other way. And something bad happened to Jonah. God gave him something that was going to get his attention. What was that? Come on, I know you guys know this. 5,000 points for you if you know what happened to Jonah. How did God get his attention and get him to go to Nineveh? Jonah got eaten. Very nice. Yes, can you swallow by a fish? You guys both came in at the same time. He was swallowed by a great fish. So 5,000 points for the fiery phoenixes. 5,000 points for the tomahawks. Tomahawks racking up some points tonight, okay? I haven't seen any theories in here, so they may lose their lead. Uh-oh. Okay, so that's what the book of Jonah is about, right? Jonah going to Nineveh and warning them that God's judgment was coming. All right, so you have the book of Micah, and he predicted the fall of Israel and its kingdom that was right beside it, Judah. Okay, so again, same thing. Now, Nahum, the book of Nahum, that's a weird word. Would you like your name to be Nahum? I definitely wouldn't. Pretty terrible name. Okay, but the name has a good meaning, and it means comfort. And so Nahum delivered a message to Nineveh, the same place Jonah went, warning them of God's judgment. Habakkuk, he wrote a book all about a conversation between him and God. That's pretty cool. Asking God why good things, why, bad, why a good and loving God would let his people suffer. Why a good and loving God would let bad things happen. So you and I wonder that sometimes, don't we? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why would a good God let us suffer? Well, the book of Habakkuk is all about that. Now, Zephaniah was an important person in Israel who, I'll give you one guess, yep, wrote about God's judgment. And we're almost done. Haggai and Zechariah both wrote books after Israel came home from exile, and they urged the Israelites to rebuild not only their cities, but also their faith in God and to turn to him. And the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, he is the last one, and he spoke after the exile. He told the people that God was coming to judge them, but also to restore and to save them. And he promised that a Savior was coming. And when you flip over out of Malachi, you're in the New Testament, and that's where you read all about Jesus, and you realize that Malachi said a Savior was coming, and then the next book, the Savior, Jesus, he really does show up, okay? So, let's go over the minor prophets again. We've got Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Twelve minor prophets to finish out our series. Now, that's twelve 12 people, 12 books of the Bible, and there's a lot of hand motions that go with it. So what I'm going to do tonight so it doesn't get lost at the end of this video, over this week I will put out a video of just the hand motions so you can remember them and memorize them. And for this coming week, I will put out some questions that you can earn points for if you can do the, if you can name the books of the Bible with the motions, okay? So I will do a separate video for the hand motions. But here's kind of what I want to finish out with us tonight. We can learn from these minor prophets and really most of the Old Testament um, that 
when Israel got their eyes off of God and they didn't turn to Jesus for or turn to God for everything that they needed and they thought that they could worship other gods or that they could do things their own way, bad things would happen. And so God would send a prophet, like he sent the major and the minor prophets. He would send them to Israel to remind God's people that they needed to look to him. And boys and girls, we need that same reminder sometimes. When we read God's word and we read these books, we see that it's easy to get our eyes off of Jesus sometimes. Bad things happen in our life or life just gets crazy. Like you're getting ready to go back to school and you're getting ready to be, some of you, online school for nine weeks. You have no idea how that's going to work. And if you try and do it in your own power and own strength, you're not going to be able to do it the best you can. Some of you are going back to school. Some of you watching, maybe your parents are teachers or maybe they're watching with you tonight and they're trying to figure out how are they going to teach in the world that we're living in right now. It's pretty crazy. And the thing is, if we try and do it on our own, we don't have the strength to do it. But if we'll turn to God and ask him to help us and focus on Jesus, he can help us do all things. The Bible says in the New Testament that God will help us do all things. We can do all things that he's called us to do through him, through Jesus, that gives us the strength. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But that means we have to ask him and we have to turn to God and ask him to help us. We can't just try and do it ourselves or look for another way to do it. Okay? So my prayer tonight is whatever you try to do, don't forget to keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't forget to ask Jesus to help you and he will certainly help you. If he has called you to do it, he will help you do it, okay? So let's remember tonight, keep our eyes on Jesus. So let's close with that prayer tonight, and let's also thank God for helping us to learn the whole Old Testament. Guys, we've learned every single book in the Old Testament, all 39 books. I'm super duper excited, okay? So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I'm so thankful, God, for that you have helped us to learn all 39 books of the Old Testament. That seems like a lot of books, and it, and it is, and I am so thankful you have given us the ability to do that. You have blessed us with the ability to remember these books. I've seen so many videos of kids saying that they know these books of the Bible, and that's so awesome. Lord, we can learn from tonight's lesson that when we take our eyes off you, bad things can happen. And when we try and do things in our own strength and our own power and figure things out our own way, we can kind of make a mess of life sometimes. And so you would send prophets to remind your people to turn to you. Lord, remind us tonight, help us to always turn to you in every single situation and to ask you to help us no matter what we face. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Guys, I'm so glad you came to hang out with me for just a little bit for Tribe Wars tonight. Don't forget, I will post the, um, I'll post the hand motions on a separate video so you can learn them. And we will get going. We have learned a whole... 39 books of the Bible, guys, the entire Old Testament. So you should give yourself a pat on the back. You've done an awesome job. And I will see you guys on Sunday for our Kids Church online. That's kind of how we're rolling right now. Don't forget, preschool is at 9 o'clock. Elementary is at 920. And uh, hopefully I see you guys in person again soon. So you guys have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you guys later.